Duke de Lua told them that the bastard son should never have been eligible to be on the roster of those worthy of merit. Yvonne remembered the common law in Croissant which doesn't recognize illegitimate children even though they officially receive a family name. Anson revealed that he is considering sending Clyde to Maha while Kiana was feeling down after hearing those statements. Yvonne noticed the reactions of Kiana and thought if she was reading her too much. The maid notified them the arrival of the soldiers. Clyde Anson greeted them and look at Kiana's way while Yvonne notices her strange reactions today. Yvonne was curious if there were something between Sir Clyde and Kiana. The Emperor acknowledged the soldiers' effort. The others are busy talking about the soldiers while Yvonne was busy looking at Kiana and Clyde. She is the only one paying attention to them. Count Anson asked Clyde the reason for him coming back to Croissant when he was offered a title by the Emperor of Maha. Clyde tells his brother that Croissant's honor is much more important to him than the title in Maha while looks Anson is insulted by his answer. The Emperor questioned Count Anson's suggestions that his younger brother seek asylum for his sake. Looks Anson was speechless of the Emperor's statement. The Emperor congratulated the soldiers again before ending the dinner and told them to take a rest. Yvonne questioned herself by being concerned about how quiet the concubine has been since the soldiers entered. The Emperor commanded Duinya and Rodin to stay behind while Duke de Lua was disgusted how he blatantly favored them. Yvonne was surprised when Carloy asked her to stay as well while the Duke was suspicious of the reason for Yvonne staying behind. The Emperor was talking how Clyde Anson is different from the Count and told them they can use him. Duinya told him that it was risky to present Clyde with a large reward and perhaps it would be to let him go to Maha while Carloy asked if it was because Clyde is an illegitimate child and told them that he would be a waste of talent. Kiana agreed to Carloy while explaining how Croissant's discriminatory law contradicts itself. Kiana's father explained to her that none of the nobles or even the commoners will accept such views easily. Kiana insists that the emperor needs new forces and should use them. Yvonne observed that Clyde turned down a title to return to Croissant while Kiana despises Croissant's custom of discriminating against bastard children and concluded that they might have something between them. Marquis Rodin was against new forces made up of illegitimate children since they already have Duinya. The Emperor told Marquis Rodin that he needs someone who is close to Delua, but the Marquis insisted that Clyde is only a half-blood that Delua's allies despises and Count Anson is itching for a chance to kill him. He asked what if he does before they can even get any help from him, while Kiana's face becomes gloomy after hearing her father's statement. The Emperor told them that he would think about it and asked to leave. Kiana was nervous in front of Yvonne while the Queen asked her if she knew Sir Clyde by chance. Kiana told her that he didn't know him and it was only the second chance she saw him. Yvonne told her that she asked her because it seemed like everyone knew him. Marquis Rodin asked Kiana the reason why the Queen asked such a nonsensical question while Kiana nervously answered that she didn't know either. Duinya asked if he is really planning to use Clyde Anson and why he bought it up in front of the Queen. Carloy told her that he wanted to make a bet. If Yvonne tells the Duke what they discussed, the Lua will kill Clyde Anson right away, and if she doesn't, Clyde will be fine. He asked why she stared at the Queen while Duinya told him that it is startling how much the Queen resembles the Duke. Carloy asked if she didn't resemble him as a child while Duinya said that it was hard to tell from the face of a newborn and it was surprising for her. Duinya reminded her of something Emperor Carlos said, that the Lua will never cherish a child who resembles him. Carloy was startled by that statement. Duinya told him that when she heard that the Duke really adored his daughter, she thought the Queen would not look much like him. Carloy started thinking and asked Duinya if there were rumors of the Duke love affairs. Duinya told him that Hans de Lua was so obsessed with obtaining power that he was not very interested in women and he did not get involved in any scandalous affairs. She asked the reason for asking such a question while Carloy told her that the more he knows about the enemy, the better. The Duke asked Yvonne about what they've discussed, and she explained that they argued about whether they should reward Clyde Anson or not. The Duke asked if it was only what they discussed while Yvonne told him what could have been discussed in front of her. The Duke told her that it was what he's curious about and asked if she had taken their side when he was gone.
Ivan explained that he even put a spell on her, so what is there to be suspicious of? But the Duke sarcastically say that magic is not powerful as she think, otherwise he would have already annihilated the Croydons. Ivan came to a realization that the Duke would discarded her if he reached his goals, and she have no usefulness. She explained that this must be the reason the Emperor let her stay, to make the Duke question her. Her father glanced at her, suspicious that Carloy planned such things means she behaves in a questionable way and thought to create a rift between him and Yvonne. Yvonne was nervous but she managed to defend her action by showing she did her job well. The Duke agreed to her reminding her to prove her worth very soon, while Yvonne asked her mother's condition. The Duke answered that she must be doing a lot better, while adding that they both changed three days after the feast. Carloy suggested that they spend time together in the royal chamber. Ivan concluded that the sudden change in attitude of Carloy is because he wants to use her. He had just been honest, she wouldn't have felt pathetic. She's thinking if she will join his side, will he order her to do evil deeds like the Duke does? She asked Marianne to send a reply to Carloy to find out everything she can because she can't put her mom's life on the line for a bet she might lose. Yvonne told Carloy he don't look well while well, he answered he's fine thinking that Clyde Anson is safe. That means Yvonne didn't tell the Duke anything. At the end, he's confused whether to like it or not because he felt that his heart sinks. Yvonne invited Carloy to sleep. He asked if she normally keeps the lights on. Yvonne answered that it's scary while remembering her childhood. Carloy asked Yvonne the reason she's not actively helping the Duke, but she only excused that her father doesn't order her to do such things. He told her that if she stay silent, they will end up hurting the Duke. Yvonne rose up and told Carloy that if he's trying to test her or trying to use her, shouldn't he reveal a bit of his intent to her? He was surprised to her directness. But he reminded himself to win Yvonne completely, only then he can use her properly. He explained that he's trying to get her help however, if he's still hated her like he did in the past, he would never thought of doing that. Yvonne told him that if he say that, she won't get involved in the fight but Carloy asked her how can this not matter to her if it will end his father. She explained that she cannot fully support her father's actions, but Carloy asked which will concern her more since she doesn't want him to die either. She asked if he's suggesting that he will give his her to her while he told her he don't have a reason not to. Yvonne grabbed his hand and told him to be honest even if it is only once, then she will think it over. She asked him who did she remind him of, if that person is important to him, or did he love him. Carloy froze after hearing those questions and said that person is already dead. Yvonne's heart was pounding thinking why is he making that kind of face. She asked if that's the person he was searching for in the Dalua territory. He responded in a sad tone that since he couldn't find her, he's sure that person is dead. She then concluded that it was really her that Carloy was looking for, and she if he thought she died because of him. He answered that it's the truth and requested to stop talking about that, but he continued explaining that amidst all her father's scheming, that person was the only person who did anything for his sake. Yvonne gritted her teeth while holding back her tears and asked Carloy to tell her something about his childhood. He asked the reason for her to be curious about that while well, Yvonne told him of he can't even do that then what can he do for her. He was surprised and started telling his story. She was listening intently while realizing how he had lived all alone in an empty world. She asked herself why couldn't at least one of them be happy. If Carloy was happy, she could have just hated him without having such complicated thoughts. Carloy told her that he kicked the Duke's groin by accident, so he fainted. If he had kicked him hard, she might not have been born. Listening to it, Yvonne started laughing so hard while Carloy was surprised to hear her laugh and finds her beautiful. They become awkward after that scene but Carloy managed to ask about her childhood. Yvonne becomes sad and explain that she doesn't have much to tell him. Carloy told her that it's not fair. She finds his reaction cute and started to laugh again until they tease each other about telling their stories while Yvonne was giggling and smiling. Carloy finds Yvonne sleeping on his shoulder while thinking it's absurd and thought he might have been bewitched. 
he asked himself for chatting with her while thinking Yvonne have no resemblance with Lou. He wished she'd stop appearing in those dreams. The next morning, Carloy was rewinding what happened last night. Yvonne finally shared her story reluctantly and awkwardly, but when she talked about her mother, she spoke as if she were telling someone else's story against her will. He didn't believe Ossel at first because there was no proof, then suddenly, another possibility came to his mind. Yvonne could be a bastard child. If that really is the case, Duinia would immediately depose her as queen. He still need Yvonne, she still has some use while remembering her smile and laughter, convincing himself that it isn't the right time yet to reveal to Duinia. The duke asked if she finally did slept with the emperor and find her reaction says otherwise, but would be nice if she could jay pregnant now. He explained he would like one of the royal family to be born from a descendant of him. The duke showed her a box covered with cloth and command her to open it. He explained that those are potions that will help improve marital relations and the chances of pregnancy, and told her to use them regularly because they cost a lot. She asked if she have to drink it while the duke told her that it was for men. She felt a shiver on her spine and asked if it's supposed for pregnancy then why a man should drink it. The duke asked if she's worried that it might be a poison and grabs one, stir it on the tea and drank it. Yvonne was surprised while the duke told her that even if that is a poison, she still have to follow his orders even if he told her to stab the emperor. Yvonne has an intuition, if it's something beneficial for one's health, this wouldn't be tasteless nor colorless, and most of all why could it be made artificially using magic? She grab one potion and test it with a silverware to test if it's poisonous, but the stick isn't changing colors. She asked herself what could he been thinking and planning. Lady Anson asked Yvonne for being stubborn about the potions given to the Duke and suggested she can just put her in charge and it will be easier. Yvonne told her that the Emperor's health is for her to worry about not her. Upon arriving at the palace, Carloy explained that it was a long gallery where portraits of the royal family are displayed. She stopped and asked about the portrait while Carloy told her that it was his father, Carlos Croydon. She saw the brooch while Carloy noticed it and told her it was called the Eye of Croydon. She saw the brooch while Carloy noticed it and told her it was called the Eye of Croydon. It was a gift to the Croydon royal family from the other four founding families, and there's a magic on that brooch. He explained that he wasn't aware of it when he lost the brooch as a child, while Yvonne asked him the reason of telling such a weighty secret. He told her that she is also a Croydon, and added that there is a recording spell on that brooch. Yvonne froze upon hearing it. Carloy continued explaining that the brooch remembers everything that happens around it while it is not in a Croydon's possession, then replays for the rightful owner to see. Carloy questioned if she have seen it before. She understood that he wanted her to bring the brooch back to him, and answered what he will do if she have seen it. He revealed that he cannot spare her father's life, however he can promise to keep her safe in return for her contribution to his efforts. She told him, she can't do it, but Carloy asked her to think it carefully. She then changed the topic and asked the portrait of a woman. He explained that she was the Verney princess who got between Croyson and Laruchua. His grandfather fell so blindly in love with her that he nearly brought their country to ruin. The portrait was hung to remind subsequent generations of the grave mistake he made. Again, Yvonne noticed something familiar. It was the necklace. He told her that it belongs to Verney's royal family that enables magician in Verney's royal family to perform very detailed and advanced magic spells. She then remembered her father's magician wearing the same necklace. Yvonne thanked him for walking her back while he reminded her that it's either him or the Duke must die. He put a cloth on Yvonne and remembered Lou. He paused and told her that he wasn't trying to pressure her. The brooch and the necklace, they're the perfect tools to attack the Duke. If Carloy has the upper hand, it would be better for her to side with him or maybe that's what she wanted to believe. Those were the thoughts of Yvonne after talking with Carloy. But putting her foolish feelings for Carloy aside, the Duke is unpredictable man and not the type to sit back and do nothing, and remembered that potion he gave her. She feels anxious for walking a tight rope, one wrong step and she could die. 
The next morning, she received letters from the Duke telling her that she already missed three chances, miss one more and she will have to pay. She noticed another letter, it was from her mother. She trembled and frozen upon learning that the Duke sent the two letters to give her a warning, reminding her that her mom is at his mercy. She's now sure he wouldn't blackmail her over a beneficial potion. It must be a poison that kills when a certain amount accumulates in the body. The Duke doesn't trust her at all. He has no intention of letting her or her mother alive. The Duke has absolutely no reason to trust or spare a bastard child like her, and she can't even reveal the truth to Carloy. She becomes scared of what the Duke might do. The next she met Carloy, she have to use that poison. Carloy was wondering if something happened to Yvonne as she turned down his invitation twice. Ossel asked if he's worried about the Queen, but he answered, he's just worried he might lose a means to get at Delua, but he keep thinking about that time. But he need to put an end to this and told Gordon he's going to see the Queen. Upon arriving at the Queen's palace, he saw the room dark glanced at the maids and asked where is the queen. The maids told him Tay the queen drank alcohol, ran out toward the garden and it has been 30 minutes. Carloy ran out the garden and saw the maid pulling Yvonne's arm while noticing her lonely eyes. He come closer, while the maid left Yvonne. Carloy looked at her pitiful state and her bruises on feet, he felt a pang on his chest. Tap her while looking at her eyes crying, he asked the reason for crying, but Yvonne suddenly realized it was Carloy. She shouted at him to go away and she can't see him. She told him to just ignore her like before, don't be good to her and don't pretend to treat her well. He become anxious but managed to come closer again, but Yvonne was persistent to stop him telling him that things were better when he treated her as if she were invisible. His contempt was bearable and better off when he glared at her with disdain. Carloy held her and asked how could she say it was better while showing a sad face. She heard her chest telling him that his face make her. While thinking he makes he want to tell him she was Lou. Carloy grabbed her hand and asked her what can he do to make her stop acting like that and told her he can't go back doing those in past while wiping out her tears. Yvonne asked him not to lie. She doesn't care about any of his past lies nor his future lies. She wanted him to promise her not to lie just this one. She was thinking that she can't trust the Duke nor Carloy. But unlike the Duke, there's one thing about Carloy that she might be able to trust, and that is Carloy feelings for Lou. Yvonne asked if she really reminded him of someone and if he really see that person in her. She asked him and pleaded not to lie about that. Carloy felt her trembling hand and nods and answered her that he know that she's someone else, but she keep reminding him of her. Yvonne now concluded that she can put her entire life on the line. Only this time she might actually be able to move forward even if she have to die. He was thinking that it was already the second time the queen fainted, and he's sure no of that is easy for her. If joining his side causes her pain so much, she can just refuse. He's wondering if she does like him that much and knew he's really a scumbag. Yvonne woke up and apologized for the cause she caused. He asked if she's seen him before. Yvonne asked why while Carloy told her that he's not sure she's even considering him as one of her options. She answered that she never seen him before and asked if he could promise her one more thing. Yvonne asked if he can trust her telling him that no matter what she say, no matter what she do, and no matter how suspiciously she behave, will he still trust her. Carloy reminded himself that Yvonne de Lua is the Duke's daughter, but if they're going to get the same boat, he have to trust her. Carloy nod as an agreement while Yvonne was surprised and asked him again. He told her that as long as she agreed to be on his side while Yvonne smile for his promise. Carloy though it was a dull nonsensical promise. A few days later, Yvonne put Lady Anson in charge of those potions while Yvonne realized that the Duke would always be wary of her whether she betray him or not, so she have to quit doing anything that might raise his suspicions. Yvonne is sure that the maid won't mix the potion into Carloy's tea herself. Lady Anson informed her that the Duke said that those are effective when taken at least once every week. She understood now that the Duke wants her to invite Carloy to her chambers at least once a week.
Lady Anson added that the potion is enough for a month or two. She froze and thought that is the length it will take for the potion to kill a person. She have to put an end to everything before it happened. Yvonne called Marianne to take the potion and asked her to find out in secret if that is a poison and if it is, she have to look for an antidote. Marianne was shocked and told her she would certainly do if she could. Yvonne apologized for asking her when she knew the situation she's in. The Duke is holding Marianne's son and daughter as hostages. Her daughter Jane is trapped in the Delua Tower under the pretext of carrying Yvonne's mom. And her son, Jimmy, stays by the Duke's side 24 hours a day. It's difficult for Marianne to go against the Duke, but the Duke doesn't monitor her as closely as he monitors Yvonne. Marianne told her that she can't guarantee anything while Yvonne told her that the mere fact she agreed is a huge help already. Marianne cry and apologizes for leaving Yvonne with no other choice but to say it's fine. Yvonne realized that joining hands with Carloy is the right choice over being the Duke's puppet. Duchess Duinia requested an audience with Carloy. They talked about Clyde Anson. He asked if he is planning to join them. Duinia revealed that she wouldn't be surprised if he is. Count Anson has been using all kinds of wicked tricks because he can't send him to the battlefield. The Count has been transferring other people's illnesses to Clyde using the same transfer magic that was outlawed long ago. That must have been humiliating for him. Duinia asked about the progress with the Queen because they need someone who can fabricate circumstantial evidence against the Duke. She told him that the brooch was obviously in Yi Delua territory. Carloy wonder how Duinya knew about the brooch since he never told about it. Duinya told him never to hide anything from her while Carloy agreed while changing the topic. Duinya noticed that the emperor changed the subject, but she repeat her question if the queen come around to their side. The emperor answered that Yvonne did while Duinya asked what did she want in return for disregarding her own father. She reveals Tamar Key Rodin had told her that it sounds like the queen has feelings for him. Duinya questioned Yvonne being truthful and wasn't convinced Yvonne will push her own family toward death over such a trivial issues. Carloy was irritated and told her that House Duinya especially her are more than capable of discarding her own flesh for the sake of such trivial matters. Duinya clarified that Delua is different and suggested not to trust Yvonne completely. The Emperor agreed to her while Duinya reminded him his grandfather's love for a woman and trust in Delua that drove him to his doom. He become more irritated towards her. Carloy was thinking that up until not to Pong ago, he thought Yvonne was no different from her father but he whispered that they're not the same. Carloy came to Yvonne upon hearing she recovered but concerned that she looks so pale. He was hesitating if he can really bring up the Duke in that situation. But Yvonne seems to read his mind and told him she will not tail back anything she said and asked him what she need to do. He was embarrassed and asked if she really thought he came to talk about that. Yvonne asked if she's wrong, but he can't deny it. However, why is he upset that she actually thought that? He asked about her health while Yvonne explained that it was a very difficult decision to make. Carloy remembered Duinya saying that the queen sounds like has feelings for him. Carloy asked the reason Yvonne like him. She was surprised and told him she didn't like him. He was ashamed and his face become red while Yvonne laugh at him and tease him that he's mean that's why she dislike him. To shrug his embarrassment, he told her that Sheb have a strange habit of doing bizarre things for someone she doesn't like. Yvonne revealed that she know how he feels about Deluas and everything the Deluas have done to him. Carloy asked why she called him Carl when she was poisoned because no one, other than his father, has ever called him that. Yvonne tried to answer his question but the magic spell restricted her to speak. Eventually, she made an excuse that she always wanted to call him by his name. Carloy blushed upon hearing it. Yvonne told him that it's all right if he doesn't know her very well. What's important is, she is on his side. Again, Carloy's heart fluttered while trying to keep a serious look. The maid told them that the tea was finished testing from poison. Yvonne was nervous knowing the Lady Anson surely mixed the potion into Carloy's tea. She thought that it will be okay for her to drink it what once while looking at Carloy. He asked if she have something to tell him. She pointed out the flowers at the back of Carloy while he looked at it. This gave Yvonne chance to switch Carloy's tea with her.
She thought that drinking I once is far better than leaving some kind of trace and getting caught. Carloy asked if she have any idea where the brooch might be. She suspected that the Duke might place the brooch in a place where his deepest secrets are hidden. Yvonne nodded and answered that she knew where it might be if her father permit her to go down to Delua territory. Carloy was suspicious about her relationship with the Duke and asked if she have a bad relationship with him. She wanted to answer yes. But again, the Verney's magic restricted her and end up answering no. Carloy was confused with her answer, but accepted it. In the concubine's chambers, Kiana asked the emperor if the queen has come over to their side. Carloy asked her why and if she doesn't trust the queen. Kiana asked the same question to him, while Carloy told her that she trust the queen enough to ask some favors. Kiana was anxious and told them whether Duke de Lua will leave her in peace, but her father reassured her that Duke de Lua cannot do anything rush to her. She agreed but remembered the looks from Yvonne's eyes and believed that the queen has realized that Clyde and her were lovers. Marquis Roden called her asking for her lost in thought while she answered it's nothing, thinking that the queen has completely joined their side. Yvonne asked the doctor if there's nothing out of the ordinary while the doctor told her there's nothing wrong. She was worried since she failed to find an antidote. She drank Carloy's tea every time Wince switching their teacups wasn't too difficult. The only difficulty she ran into was convincing the young maid servant to do as she said. She pitied her because she's just a child, but she explained to her that once all is over. The Duke will get rid of her and asked if the Duke promised her to support her family in return for her life. The young maid was speechless, while Yvonne explained that her two previous attendant disappeared without a trace together with their families and found out they were all dead. The young maid was shocked to learn the truth. Yvonne promised her that if she switched the cups as she instructed, she will make sure to find an opportunity to help her and her family to flee. The maid thanked Yvonne and accepted her orders. Yvonne inquired the Duke not coming to the capital. The doctor told her that the lack of news from the Duke means he's busy and instructed him to contact him if she become pregnant. Someone from the Delua residence came for Yvonne, but she was surprised it was Fiori, the Duke's magician. He told Yvonne that the Duke didn't feel like his letter would be enough, while she asked the reason for making the Duke busy. She's certain the necklace underneath his shirt is the same one owned the Verney princess and wonders his relationship with the Verney's royal family. The magician told her it's time to get rid of the royal concubine, but Yvonne asked if that is necessary. He stated that it's only logical to do so and asked if she found anything. Yvonne didn't respond but he then proposed that the only option for the concubine is to kill her. Yvonne didn't want that to happen. So she revealed that it seems like the concubine has a relationship with the second son of House Anson. The magician asked what she would do with that information. Yvonne told him that she will lure the two into meeting at the party to catch them red-handed. He gave her a magic pen that can copy other people's handwriting so she can forge the concubine's handwriting. However, he was suspicious and questions her for not telling that information immediately while she answered that she didn't have any evidence. He told her that it would be better if she's more foolish and came closer to touch up the anti-divulgent spell. Yvonne was surprised while he explained that he need to add on the restrictions about the potion and the revelations about Kiana. She regretted not telling Carloy, if she known that would happen, she should have told him. Yvonne told him that she wanted to visit the territory because she's worried about her mother. While the magician agreed to tell the Duke, he reminded Yvonne not to trust the king because Croydons aren't worthy of such faith or trust. Ossel told Carloy if the queen decided to break with her father and take the emperor's side, it's a proof that she's not the daughter of the duke's wife. Carloy then asked him where would be the real daughter go. Ossel answered that he didn't know, but he's sure the queen was a less loved daughter, that's why the duke let her marry the emperor. Carloy told him that if it's the truth, there's no way to confirm it while Ossel reminded him to just ask the queen himself since she came over to his side. Ossel justified that there's no reason for the queen to lie anymore. The emperor went to see Yvonne while thinking that Ossel's hunches have never been wrong, but if he's really right, he doesn't know what to do. It's logical that hiding the identity of an illegitimate child is a felony in Croissant.
It will be an opportunity to turn the tables against the Duke, but Carloy was worried what will happen to Yvonne. Carloy feels strange after seeing Yvonne smile. There's no trace of unhappiness or even the slightest but of misery. Yvonne noticed his arrival while he came closer and told her he didn't know that she'd like the entree room that much. She answered that it was beautiful, while Carloy asked if she is a good dancer explaining that the first party of Aruba Loof will take place in a few days. Yvonne asked him the reason for asking. Carloy explained that she will have to dance with him. She was startled since it has been too long since she danced and gave an excuse that she will not mind if he will dance with the concubine. Carloy was troubled since he also knew they never dances before but insists that he will dance with the queen first before the concubine. Yvonne offered rosemary flowers to Carloy which helped relieve fatigue. He accepted it. He directly told her that Ossel is suspicious about her relationship with the duke and asked if the duke's wife is not her mother. But Yvonne answered that she was her mother and told him that Ossel must have gotten the wrong idea. Carloy trusts her answer since it would be a shame to go as far as putting the Duke in prison for hiding an illegitimate child and he can't use Yvonne just for that. He smiled at her but she looked troubled. The day of Aruba Loof started, Carloy was on his way to escort Yvonne while thinking he was just pretending to be nice but he didn't know the reason for feeling more and more troubled. He was mesmerized with Yvonne's beauty. He reached his hand. Yvonne stated that it was her first time making an entrance like that. While walking, she smelled the rosemary flowers on Carloy and whispered to him. He paused while his heart can't stop pounding, realizing that the reason for his anxiousness around Yvonne is because he feel vulnerable and he doesn't see anything in the way to stop him from getting closer to her. Just like that, the party began, while Yvonne didn't feel great about using the concubine, but that should be better than letting her die. Her though was cut off by Carloy calling her name for them to dance. She was anxious to dance reminding the Duke punishing her if she didn't dance well. However, this time, the dance helped her feel comfortable when Carloy was leading her. She told Carloy that he changed, he was surprised to hear it and explained that it was because their relationship has changed. Yvonne told him that when all of those is over, she's hoping he can be at peace, but Carloy stopped and hurt, realizing what she said is impossible because he doubt that he will left with nothing, regardless of whether he care more about Yvonne. There's no way things can continue as they are. Kiana was walking along the hall when Clyde called her. She was shocked that he was there and told him that the nobles will gather on the balcony and asked if he doesn't get her letter that they can't see each other. Clyde was confused since he received a letter from her telling to come to the west balcony at 9 o'clock. He showed the letter to her. Kiana was shocked that the letter is her handwriting but explained that she didn't wrote it. She is about to leave him when Count Anson opened the door while smiling. He took the letter and asked what is that and asked if it is a secret love affair. Many nobles saw them and was whispering with each other. Marquis Rodin asked Kiana what was happening, while Count Anson asked if he is aware of the relationship between his younger brother and the royal concubine. With irritated face, Kiana asked what is he talking about and told him he didn't write the letter and explained that she was just clearing misunderstanding with Clyde. Carloy noticed them and asked about the commotion while Kiana noticed that the queen looks troubled and realized that the only person who can access to palace stationery and capable of working with Count Anson is the queen. During the meeting, nobles were suggesting to depose the concubine. The emperor now understands the reason Clyde wanted to remain in Croissant even when he had nothing to gain and Kiana got outraged about how illegitimate children are treated there. He stopped them arguing and told them that they have other matters to attend to and just exclude the concubine from official affairs. Count Anson opposed it, but the emperor told him that Sir Clyde has been in Maha for a year and find it unlikely he and the concubine could done anything during that time. Count Anson was speechless since he doesn't have proof that the two met each other before then. The emperor ended the discussion. Kiana explained that she didn't write the letter. While Carloy agreed to her, but asked if she really do have some kind of relationship with Sir Clyde. Marquis Roden find it absurd as he believed his daughter loves the Emperor because she's the one insisted to become his concubine.
The emperor explained to the Marquis that Kiana didn't become a concubine because she loves him. He explained that they made a contract for each other's benefit as he was searching for a woman to act as his concubine. The Marquis stumbled because of shocked about knowing the truth while Kiana explained that she didn't regret her decision because getting out of marriage he arranged for her was impossible unless she married the emperor. The Marquis felt betrayed by her daughter while some men were holding him back to leave the room. Kiana told them that it was the Queen who did it because she's only the one capable of doing it. She explained that the Queen asked her if she had met Sir Clyde before. Carloy was surprised to know it, but expli that the Queen came over their side. Kiana suspected that she might be pretending and asked if there's a proof she's on their side. Carloy insisted that it might be the Duke or Count behind it. He remembered Yvonne's sincerity that day and he didn't saw a slightest lie. Duinia asked if the Empress agreed to retrieve the brooch. He answered that Yvonne plans to God own to the territory to bring it back. She told him that they can make a decision about the Queen after seeing what she does with the brooch. Duinia reminded Carloy not to trust the Empress and don't give her any more information because the Empress' only role is to bring back the brooch. Duinia and Kiana was surprised that the Emperor didn't answer and just leave the room. Yvonne already consumed the third vials of potion, she already felt slightest pang near her heart and also have a sleep paralysis frequently. Carloy asked the for asking Kiana whether she had met Sir Clyde before. She made an excuse that she didn't knew Clyde but everyone else did, wondering if he's famous. She thought that Kiana really loves Carloy making the love letter only a setup. Carloy was hesitating if he will reveal the truth, but he told her that those two definitely have some kind of relationship. She was surprised to know it while thinking what kind of relationship does Carloy have with the concubine. Carloy asked her the day she will be heading to the territory. She answered that she already sent a letter to her father and waiting for his response. She was glad that he didn't dig further and felt Carloy is trusting her. Yvonne asked if he's okay knowing the relationship of the concubine and another man, while he answered that he's fine since Yvonne is in his side. Yvonne smiled and answered she is. Carloy was hesitating as he really can trust her, yet he impulsively revealed the truth to Sumtwim he's not sure he can trust yet. For him, testing Yvonne would feel like testing himself. He saw Lou on Yvonne while she was saying that she is on his side. Those words made a big impact on him, as those are the words he always wanted to hear from someone in his life, but he feels guilty. Carloy asked Ossel about his thought of the Queen. Ossel didn't know the answer, but he was sure the Queen would never harm him. Duchess Duinia visited the Emperor to tell him about Clyde Anson information. Carloy asked what did he want in return. Duinia told him that he asked for permission to marry Kiana once this is all over. She then revealed that Clyde overheard the conversation between Lady Anson and Count Anson, which they suspect that the Queen is the Duke's bastard daughter. He froze while Duinia noticed his reaction, asking if he already knows the truth. She was angry at him for not saying a word, but he explained that he kept quiet because he didn't have evidence. Duinia told him that there is only one reason he hides something from her, and that is his goals differ from her. She then told him that since he might be hiding something from her, she will not relay everything she heard from Clyde Anson. The Emperor asked what she will plan to do, but Duinia answered that when she find evidence, she will tell him and was hoping she can trust him not to ignore her request. The Emperor was drinking alcohol thinking Duinia's sources were credible. With this, he remembered Yvonne answering his question and found out that it was a lie. He walked past the hallway and find himself inside Yvonne's bedroom, asking what have left to confirm and what else is there to expect. That woman isn't deceiving him, he's willingly being deceived. Merely because she said she was on his side, merely because of her tears, and because he was swayed by her smile. Yvonne woke up and sniffed him asking what happened to him, while Carloy was asking himself if a person can fake that kind of emotions. He touched her face and asked if she really is on his side. Yvonne answered quickly. He pushed her down. She told him she is on his side, then kissed her passionately. He gritted his teeth and asked her to tell him to stop and just tell that it was a lie. Yvonne told him that it was okay while tears falls down on her cheek, 
Carloy find those years true and wondered if she have ever lied to him as well. Yvonne answered that she was not lying about being on his side, while he was thinking if it's possible for someone to lie in such a desperate situation. Yvonne's words are shaking him up again. Everything feels like a like one minute, then feels like the truth next. She called his name, yet lies to him. He should have acted sooner. He should have killed her early on. Yvonne was wondering if something happened to Carloy and was troubled because of the concubine and hope being with her consoled him, even if it was only a little bit. One morning, Yvonne was anxious after receiving a letter from the Duke telling her not to come to Dalua territory because he would come to the capital soon. Suddenly, she felt a chest pain feeling that the pain is getting worse. Asil come inside the room while asking him the reason. Asil told her that he was ordered by the Emperor to ask whether she can go down to the territory. She paused since Carloy could have come and asked her himself and thought if last night was just a mistake. Yvonne told him that she was about to tell the Emperor that she couldn't come because the Duke told so. Asil was suspicious asking the reason for the Duke not letting his daughter to visit. She answered that the Duke must be worried, but she planned to ask him when he comes to the capital. Asil told her that he was suspicious of her because it doesn't make sense, but he will relay her exact words to the Emperor, though he's not sure the Emperor will believe it. Duinia reported that the ambassador from Laruchua brought some strange news that Verni has begun moving its soldiers to Dalua. She then asked when will the queen go down to the territory. Instead of answering, he asked Duinia if the queen really is a bastard daughter, does she has a good relationship with the duke. Duinia already knew that the queen must have said she couldn't go to the territory and the emperor must think the duke is threatening the queen. She then asked him the reason for thinking that, did the queen shed tears, or did she implore him to trust her? Duinya gritted with anger and asked if he actually sleep with the queen. She burst out her anger to him, while Carloy was thinking if the reason he slept with Yvonne is because he couldn't trust her. That's why he can't bring himself to go see her again because he's afraid of confirming Yvonne's deception with his own eyes. Duinya explained that the princess of Verni did the exact same thing to his grandfather, Emperor Carlos. She claimed that the royal family of Verni threatened her. She gave all kinds of excuses to lure the emperor into attacking Laruchua first. Verni then used that as their opportunity to invade Croissant. The Delua added fuel to the fire and encouraged Emperor Carlos to wage war. Then he went outside to subdue Verni and end the war. Delua turned himself into a hero who saved the country and that the emperor, blinded by love, nearly ruined. Duchess Duinia pleaded Carloy not to trust the Deluas and not let history repeat itself. Carloy answered that he will keep that in mind. A few days later, Duke Delua visited the emperor. The duke told him that he was unwell and had to stay in his territory while the emperor asked the reason of him not attending the House of Peers. He excuses that it's no longer enjoyable with doing a running rampant and he must return to his territory soon. The emperor told him about the Verni relocating their troops and must be headed to Dalua. The duke paused and told him that they may be on move, but they didn't come to Dalua. Otherwise, he would have known and reminded him that he was the one who warded them off from their country. The emperor sarcastically told him that he used the Verni's magic, yet he doesn't exchange secret communication with them. While the duke asked if he have evidence to back that claim, Carloy asked if he will be satisfied only if he caused another war, but the duke told him that it was his grandfather who caused it, not him. He remembered how Delua encouraged the war while Duinya opposed it, the same exact thing Yvonne was doing. Again, he asked the duke the reason for not permitting the empress go down the territory, but the duke deny such thing. Carloy now wonders why Yvonne did say that to him and asked himself if she did lie to him. The duke told him that it was something the emperor must permit and asked him if his relationship with his daughter has improved. Carloy then asked himself, how did he end up considering trusting the duke's daughter because rationally speaking, he always knew but in that moment, it seemed like the truth and remembered the duke's statement about him haven't had the opportunity to go berserk yet.
He asked himself again, is he unable to distinguish between lies and truth and planned to talk to Yvonne to check. The Duke visited Yvonne, while she asked the reason for not replying to her letters, but the Duke insisted that he already said no, he inquired about feeding the potion regularly B that doesn't see the Emperor change. Yvonne was troubled and asked if there was something that's supposed to change, the Duke just grinned like an evil. He asked the reason for the Emperor's inquiry about the Delua territory and asked if they too are closer. She answered that the Emperor trust her while the Duke revealed that is what he's expecting since the Emperor is drowning in loneliness. Yvonne asked if he's not lonely. He paused, then answered that such sentiments are only for those who have the leisure to feel them. He told her to stay in the capital because he will bring her mother to the capital if she just wait. The Duke reminded her to finish off those potions quickly as well. She wonders how in the world does he plan on bringing her mom in the capital. They both were shocked when they heard the Emperor visiting Yvonne. Carloy inquired about the Duke but Yvonne didn't reveal what the Duke said to her but only speak about the Duke not allowing her to visit the territory. Carloy was suspicious and asked to see the letter the Duke wrote to her, but she told him that she threw it away. With this, Carloy's eyes become cold. Yvonne told him that she had a habit of throwing away letters she read and tell him she will write to her father again. She asked if he wanted to have dinner but he declined. Yvonne inquired about what happened last night, but Carloy told her that he must have had too much to drink and asked to forgive him. She realized that this will happen. That's why she told him not to be nice to her so she wouldn't get hurt again. Yvonne never expected him to believe her completely without the slightest bit of doubt, but she to focus on what she can do. Yvonne inquired to Marianne if Jane has written to her and about Lady Anson. The maid told her that they didn't. Several days have passed, but she have not heard from her yet. Ellie has not received any other orders either and doesn't ordered by the Duke to keep an eye on her. With this, Yvonne find it strange and something must be going in the territory. She told Marianne to tell Ellie to throw the remaining potions and give her some things she can sell for money and help her leave immediately. Yvonne was thinking on speaking with Carlo even if her needs to force her way in. Marianne reported that Ellie made it out, but the number of soldiers guarding the palace gates has increased. If they had acted later, they might not have been able to send Ellie out. Suddenly, a maid rushing called Yvonne. Duinya and Carloy was talking about Delua starting a revolt since under normal circumstances, Delua wouldn't do that but Delua's only goal is to take Croissant for himself. Duinya asked the reason he would leave the queen while planning a revolt, he becomes speechless. He asked how did Clyde Anson know the Empress is a bastard child. While Duinya answered that he saw the Count's diary where he wrote that he occasionally saw the Duke's daughter and apparently, everything about her was exactly like the Duchess. A guard reported that an urgent message came from Marchia which said that Delua's personal army was marching to the Marchia border and declared a military revolt. Carloy gritted his teeth wondering if Yvonne knew the Duke would start a revolt or not. The letter said that Delua claimed that Carloy had gone berserk and must abdicate the throne. They were confused on claiming an unverified pretext. Suddenly, a guard rushed inside the room to tell the emperor that they caught the queen attempting to sneak out of the palace with her ladies in waiting. He was shocked and feel betrayed by Yvonne causing the mug to shatter.